let's dive right into it. I mean, Xverse is doing some very cool things. We've got uh, a few very interesting questions and topics planned. Um, one, one of one of the topics that I think I'm going to get some spicy takes from from these panelists. That's what I'm going to start with. I, I love the spicy takes out here. NFTs in games. Let's talk about that. Do we like NFTs in games? Like, do we want NFTs that give you tokens? Do we want NFTs as skins and cosmetics? Do we want them as in-game items that you can use and trade? Are NFTs in games good, bad, useless, a gimmick? Give us some spicy takes, guys. Matthew, you know the rule. First emoji I see, I call on you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, yes, NFTs in games are fantastic. As long as players know what the fuck to do with them, as long as you present the NFTs in the game in a way that people can understand and play the game normally as they would. If you have an NFT that you have to take somewhere, you have to stake it, you then get some, some tokens and all the rest of it, maybe that's not the best. But, you know, if it's just something like a cool skin that you can sell, um, or if it's something like an invisibility cloak that makes you invisible, then that's cool. I think we put a lot of really bad game design around NFTs. For example, if you give an NFT stats, then as soon as you bring out more content and you bring out a better NFT, you devalue the previous one and you get angry people. Likewise, if you make your NFT through crafting, you've just given yourself an infinite market that will go down to zero because there will be someone in a sweaty tiny room who will press and click and craft as long as that value is above zero. So that's my take. Uh, we give them out for free, limited, and uh, I think that's the way. Oh man, love, love the take. And that got me thinking, I, I feel rugged off my iPhone 5. I'm using the iPhone 15. Look at them over there devaluing those collections. Uh, Roger, over to you. Yeah, um, I think we have a long way to go with the NFT. NFTs and the word NFT, right? Um, I think if, if I'm a game, I'm not even mentioning NFTs or strategically utilizing that as any type of asset right now. Um, it's just going to steer away the Web2 gamers. It's going to steer away the people that you're trying to get. You already know that you could go and work with KOLs in Web3 and really bring all those Web3 users just by spending some money. But the reality is, is that's not enough for any game to survive, right? So I think avoiding those things right now early because we're still very early is the best strategy in my opinion right this is always, always my opinion um as soon as you see the word nft from web2 side they steer away and i know this because i speak to web2 companies in esports and and um on the entertainment side on the sponsorship side i've already met with many companies like hyperx zowie benq and i could tell you right now they ain't touching anything that has the word nft or anything like that so i think as a game you really have to you really have to figure out that that medium if you are going to have that strategy but i'll tell you right now it's not the best strategy with the current climate of our culture oh man love that that spi spicy take number one guys let's Let's see who wins spicy take of the day. I'm going to send this one over to White Glint. Well, give, give us some thoughts. Yeah, man. Like, no, I completely agree with that. Like, the whole NFT, when, when you're adding it into, like, a gaming economy, it can get pretty complex. And then over time, you just, you don't know what to do. Um, one, you have sort of the pay-to-win direction. Like, hey, stronger NFTs. But then, you know, again, you got infinite scaling. Every time you release something new, you got to make that stronger. Or you go, you know, crafting away just way too many things and you can't really control that. Um, I think, to be honest, the best ways is to keep it simple and keep them as cosmetics or some direct function. For example, um, a season toss as an NFT, which is great, right? So just don't overcomplicate it, make a great game. And yeah, stuff will be good. Oh man, love that. So keep it simple. We got someone else says keep it invisible. We got Roger says don't do it at all. Uh, le let's see what else we're going to get here. Uh, Luke, over to you. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a little shocked. I, I want more NFTs. I want more airdrops for holding NFTs. Uh, I want more farming with my airdrops, like Space Nation kind of style. I hold that. I get free stuff. Uh, so I'm 100% for that. As long as it also has a utility. Like, I like the utility behind those. Just having a fancy picture of something is not my kind of thing. 
But having, for example, a piece of land in medieval empires, you can earn off that. You can sell it if you don't like it anymore. So ownership is the thing that I really like. And uh, ownership, you can do that via other mechanisms. But why not own an NFT? You don't want to play anymore. You sell that NFT. Or uh, you can get uh, special cool access to certain things, which you don't have if you have that NFT. So token gating through an NFT, also something that I really like. And my favorite part so far lately is, hey, I own an NFT, I look at my wallet, I get a random airdrop from something, someone, somewhere, uh, and I, I, I get free stuff. Like, of course, I put in some money before, but if I can get an equal amount out, then I'm already in plus. So um, I want more NFTs, especially free NFTs. Uh, I want pets in Call of the Void. Uh, I, I like those little cute heart bubbles i want everything of that so my spicy take is uh we should have way more no that's not a spicy take what would be my spicy take uh gaming is not going to make it uh that's my spicy take oh, i'll respond real quick i gotta respond david until that's david i gotta, gotta respond to that i'm i gotta yeah, respond to that pretend you didn't say that one but go for it roger Luke, listen, the reality is, is that if us, we love all the free stuff. We love the NFTs. Reality is, is that if we are the only community, none of these games will survive. And the way we currently operate with these free airdrops, I can tell you right now, Web2 gamers would have no idea they even got airdropped something for years to come. They would have no idea it even came. So for me, you know, we want more, but you have to make it simple. And right now, we don't have an, a simple process for any of this. Like right now, I have Web2 gamers getting paid in, uh, trying to transfer uh, Polygon to USD. They have enough Matic in their wallet, but it's still saying it's not enough. Um, so there's a lot of barriers when it comes to this, right? So we have to figure out us first, figure out the industry first, before we want more, 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 more. Because if we want more, 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 it's only going to be us here. And if it's only us here, none of these games survive. And uh, ex me, excellent pushback, I Roger. I do, I do appreciate that. But you know, me personally, give give me sixty nine thousand NFTs. Uh, I want to throw this over to Shao, Shaolin Warrior. What's your take on it? Man, you you, you keep it popping, bro. You keep it, you keep in tabs. I love it. Uh, this is one of those fun things that for me, I kind of give you a little bit more of a balanced take. Less spicy, but I think it's still important, right? Um, I think you got to have a simple integration that falls in line with everything else. And if you're going to have something simple like that, you're looking at battle passes and you're looking at rewards and loyalty rewards. So I think if you look at that and add that flavor at NFT, you're really simplifying and bridging both Web 2 and Web 3 in a way that's effective. You're, only pro you're also providing access, exclusivity, additional discounts. Obviously, you know, games actually have to make money on top of um, NFTs. I think that's going to really be the future of terms of like adding a layer of utility and engagement that helps drive. Now, when it comes to actual NFTs, in addition to that, you know, the Genesis Pass or the Adventure Pass, you you definitely want to focus on soulbound tokens. I think that's the thing that's going to really change the dynamic of how all things are working within Web3 Gaming is you apply this layer so that you can't sell it, but you can reward people time after time after hitting different milestones, right? The biggest thing about gaming is achievements, unlocking things that weren't previously accessible and at some point after a base of all of these SBTs you can then get a unique NFT whether it be a skin a gun something that is interoperable and then that's how you just change and elevate what's missing from the exact market so for me the spicy take would just be innovation innovating the way people are doing it because web2 gaming is pretty broken in terms of you put in thousands of dollars and you get nothing in return because all they do is they ship you the same product with a different gear on it and i'm not down for that and i don't love that and it just needs to really give back to the community because they've invested not just the money but they invested the time so you have to reward them for it that's my oh take. man that that was that was a pretty spicy take i i like it i do like it um grim over to you so here's my point of view. I mean, I'm resonating a lot with what Roger has been saying and Glint because I feel like they're closer to the way I think. And NFTs in gaming are not prime time yet. They are nowhere close being ready for allowing a gaming ecosystem to have NFTs as a word that is being utilized in a gaming ecosystem. Right now, if we look at Web2 Gaming, Nobody of these players want to even come close to the word or, un or want to know that there is an NFT behind it because they've been burned a lot of times by big players like Ubisoft trying to push on them, you know, currencies and whatnot. 
and it did not work for them. It didn't resonate. So what does a gamer want? Entertainment value. And if you want to introduce NFTs, you must go the same route that big players like Valve has been doing with Counter-Strike, where you do have a way to tra transact these NFTs, the skins, the weapons, and whatnot. But they're not called NFTs, and nobody's thinking even closely to, if, is that an NFT? They just know that there is a skin and it's tradable. Once we bridge that barrier, then I am guaranteeing you that the whole crypto, Web3, a gaming ecosystem will take it to a new level. So right now, we are at the embryo stage. We have a lot of potential. It will get there as soon as the entertainment value is bigger than the reward. Because right now, you know, players want entertainment when they're playing games. They don't think about making money. Yes, it's a bonus because we have influencers, we have streamers that work with that. You know, they, they build their career around streaming and making money by playing games on, on Twitch, on Kicks, or what have you. And allowing normals to also have a revenue stream would be great. I think that's the future. That's what we Ready Player Me fanatics want to see, you know? But we're not oh, there man. yet. Ready, ready Player Me, Ready Player One. Now, now you are speaking my language. I actually think Grim is in the lead now. I, I saw I saw emojis being thrown up from everybody who had a different take. Oh my God! All right, number one leader. Let's shout. You got a thumbs down. I will throw it back to you. Uh, let's go to. We're gonna go to Luke, then Golden. <laughs> yeah. So when I say more NFTs, I still want more NFTs, uh, and I think Grim uh, took it to the point like. We have an IMX wallet in our game, Passport Wallet. You sign up via Google, you don't have a clue that you have a wallet now. And then it's the job of the, uh, the, the game studio to convince the people, hey, now you have something that you can actually trade. And if you're on a chain where there's zero gas fees, for example, you can trade back and forth without knowing all that stuff. I think that is the future. So we still need to tokenize those things so okay, the people can sell it and trade it. So I want even more NFTs but in an easy way. So I think that's the term where we come down together. Like on IMX, you don't know that you have a wallet. You can have all those NFTs. If you don't use them, I don't care. Keep them in your wallet, look at them, think they're fancy. But if you actually want to do something with them, you can feel free to do it. But you're not forced to do that. Games that force, hey, you need to do this and this and this in your game, and then you need to bridge it to a certain stage and uh, swap it and do fancy things. That's not something that we need. Just have it in the game. People don't notice it. If they want to interact with it, then that's fine. Don't force them. Gamify a way that uh, like people can get access to them. Have a good education behind it to explain people what's the benefit of it. And I never, ever in my life met a gamer that didn't want to have an NFT after I explained them what it actually is. I never met a gamer that said, like, oh, NFTs are shit and everything. If I met them, then... Five minutes later, he said, oh, NFTs are the best thing ever in my life that happened to me. Thank you, Luke, for explaining me that. Because it's just a matter of explaining. And I think you in your friend circle, if you have anyone that doesn't think that uh, crypto gaming, blockchain gaming, or however you want to call it, is the future, let me know. Hook him up with me. I convince him in three minutes. If every one of us is doing that and that will happen, then we're there. Oh, man. All right. Satoshi Nakamoto, if you are out there listening... Luke is your guy. Um, all right, we're going to get to the rest of these hands, and then I want to talk about some UGC. Uh, Golden, go for it. Man, Graham was touching on the topic that I was thinking. Luke, you had a spicy take with saying the gaming industry is done if they don't convert to NFT. But the thing is, what Graham was saying, it is a marketing issue. They have to narrow it and not use NFT. That is key. Digital collectibles, things that gamers like to hear digital goods, things like that will be an NFT to them that they don't even know is an NFT. And that's the way. It's got to be seamless as well with uh, Roger, Roger was saying. They don't want to learn all the wallet stuff. They just want to get it. And then if they have it, they can utilize it later, especially if they see that it's accruing some interest on funds or making some money for them on the side. I mean, these are things that gamers will love to hear. Digital collectible or something like that, that is indeed an NFT, but at the same time, it's called something different. It's all a marketing issue. 
if you market it the right way, they'll accept it. Hey, there you go. A, a lot of times it does nail down to the, the PR problem and just the message. Excellent point. Uh, Matthew, and then Shao, and then it is time for some UGC, guys. Yeah, no, it's definitely the PR message. If you want to turn a gamer into Greta Thunberg, you only have to mention the word NFT to a hardcore gamer, and you will turn them into a hardcore environmentalist in five seconds. And there is one company responsible for this shit, and that's Ubisoft. Like, for real, Ubisoft has... As soon as they charge something, it is poison to gamers, and that's why I feel sorry for anyone making... Uh, "Quote unquote AAA game or their Unreal Five demo with a token." So I think it's really important that we just avoid this whole like we're going to exploit you, we're going to take extra money off the NFTs. We need to have a system that gamers understand. They don't want to. I have to ask the question: How do you make money from this? Because as soon as they can't see how you're making money from this, they are going to fuck you so hard. It's going to be really sad. You're just <laughs> yeah. That's not something you should say on space. But I don't care. Anyway, I've been on spaces for too long. It's been like 11 hour days, 16 hour days. Anyway, they will destroy you. Um, nicer. They will destroy you if you try and say to them, here's this system that is barely understandable. And as long as it goes up, according to the crypto market, the more you relate the game to the crypto market and it going up and the token having value, the less they care, the less they understand. And the more they think you are trying to scam their asses. Like hide it is a good method. Give them lots of NFTs, allow them to trade it, but just don't just monetize on it immediately. Get them hooked first. It's like the drugs thing. But yeah, not so bad. Uh, um, honestly, hey, th this is a spicy take space. So, um, you know, uh, I, I don't think I need to give any parental advisories, but, you know, if we do, uh, I might drop one in there next time. Uh, I just want to remind everybody, if you're listening, if you're having fun, if you like this conversation, retweet the space. In about 15 minutes, we're going to have some more Q&A with our partner of this space, Xverse. That's going to be kind of fun. Um, Shao, over to you. I actually wanted to just respond to Grim because, you know, Grim and I usually we agree, but I totally disagree with him, right? Like, first of all, everybody who's like, oh, you know, Web2, uh, gamers, they don't want anything to do with NFTs. That's because you're talking about, like, these first world countries with their limited populations. You go to India, you go to Vietnam, you go to the Philippines, go to Indonesia, 278 million people. You go to South America, hundreds of millions of people, all playing mobile games, playing Axie Infinity, playing all these things where Web3 gaming is just another form of gaming. And these people want to play, they want to be incentivized, and they want to get... I'm just saying, that's the, that's the counterpoint. You can actually see the adoption happening everywhere else around the world. When the Western world wants to come and join the fun, please, welcome the, we'll welcome them as well. Hey, th there we go. Honestly, we got more spicy takes in the past few minutes than I was expecting. You guys have definitely impressed me. The same way that NFTs are going to impress all these gamers that we're going to bring in in the future. But, you know, time for some UGC talk, guys. I think all of us know that three-letter acronym UGC better than MOM or DAD, especially if you're working in a Web3 gaming company. Like, the, the, the main question, is your game dead in the water if players don't want to create UGC? Like, what are the best ways to encourage players to enjoy making the content and post some things on social media i mean that that's what we want at the end of the day guys if you work at a game you want people to have fun and you want them to post it they have fun we get happy it's like a never-ending cycle uh let's start it off with white glint go for it yeah man like you just see super important right like because you have like a couple of different layers to that first is going to be like if your game's good enough there is going to be you just see they're going to make content of that so that that's the first layer that you really need to nail down um something that we're trying really hard to do just focusing on gameplay making that's going out there really well you know being accepted by the community and then you have the secondary layer which is like okay what can you actually do with ugc in game um this is something that we're exploring right now it's a little bit difficult so what we're doing is um we're working on a system where we can allow players to create skins based on text prompts and then these skins will be able to be tradable on the marketplace itself. Now, as you can imagine, that's like, it's super complicated because like, if you do a couple of things, like let's say add some um, fire deco onto my AK, 
um, you do that, but how do I put a price on that for UGC, right? So that's kind of where we're stuck now. But in terms of like getting text prompt into the textures itself, that's the easy part. Um, the hard part is like figuring out a value to tie to that. Uh, but yeah, that's my thing on UGC, like make a really great game. And then from there, like scale down and be like, okay, what can they make in game? That's what we're doing right now. I lo love that. You make it sound simple, but we all know how hard that is. So look very much looking forward to what you guys do there. Uh, Matthew, take it away. So UGC makes sense, right? If you have a game that UGC makes sense in. Also, I think UGC is um, an acronym that people should think of once they have LTV discovered. Um, you need to actually be making money from your people. You need to actually have a value proposition before you want to get them to make content for your game. Because most of the UGC games that are successful, they spawned off of really, like either the entire game was focused on UGC, or this was something from a dedicated modding community of 10 years kind of, um, 10 years sort of uh, prosperity making this in the hardcore community. Like UGC, if you look at say Mario Maker, I think it's less than 1% of people make Mario levels in Mario Maker. And that is literally called Mario Maker. It's not called like Mario plus some UGC. And I think people are really, really like trying to get UGC and they're cramming it into games. And if you've ever made UGC, the games are attempted to, it's fucking difficult. It's really hard. Like it's hard enough to make a game in general, just sticking UGC on it. I mean, what's, what's that going to do for Hearthstone, right? Do you get a certain amount of points and you can make some broken card? Like UGC only works if you have like a proper experience where it's more sandboxy than just shooting a dude in the head. I mean, Halo Forge, right? Halo Forge was not the first thing they released. Like, you've got to have a good game with a good community to make them even want to make UGC for your game. And I think we're often, we're spending so much money because we have ways of raising that other games companies could only dream of, right? We have VCs who don't do DD, at least in 2021 anyway. Um, we have tokens. You don't even have to have a game out. You can just have a video, like paying for a 15K video and then getting enough money to make an entire game plus UGC. That's insanity. That's the definition of insanity. So UGC, right game. And you have to have the LTV, you have to have a community, you have to have people willing to build stuff because if the UGC comes out better than your original game within a few days, you are screwed. Oh man, Matthew, absolutely love the take, aside from the part where you name-dropped Hearthstone. Um, I've been a Magic the Gathering player for like 20 years, I actually played on a pro level, but I will forgive you there. Yeah, we're, we're I love Magic. Friends, Matthew. I okay. love Magic, that's why I'm gonna diss Hearthstone. But Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, they're both trading card games. It's okay, I said I forgive you and we're still friends. I, I do get the point. Grim, go for it. So as I was mentioning before, UGC is strongly tied to the entertainment value or also to the fact that you need to provide something for the user that is actually creating the content. In Web3, we see a lot of these campaigns, like the most famous one is not connected to a game, but has managed to captivate their audience to create content in a massive way. And we all know Pac Moon and the way they're doing it. And I think that's the essence. If we want to create something that people want to create content, it needs to have that kind of resonance with the community. It needs to allow the players, allow the people that are engaging with the game to also have some feedback, some reward for doing so. And a lot of these communities are doing that because they understand that there is a value coming towards them. There is not only the entertainment value. Web3 Gaming and UGC are tied to rewards. So it's more the reward factor than it is the entertainment value. I wish it wasn't so, and I wish it would transition to entertainment value. But until we get to that point, you know, where people are playing games and streaming them on Twitch and Kicks and what have you, we will still have, you know, the momentum being driven by airdrops, by NFT whitelist and whatnot. So what do we want to see in the future of like Web3 Gamings? We want to have a transitional period where everybody that picks up a game is just enjoying them. And then you'll see content creators that are streaming, they are making their money off of, you know, Web3 Gamings and enticing more players to play them by watching their streams. 
because of their entertainment value. And it will be a magical mix between entertainment and reward. But you don't know about it. It just comes naturally. A good example that I want to quote, and I feel like we, we should look into that because it, it was very successful at the time, is what Diablo 3 did with the auction house. You were able to play the game, collect items, and then sell them on an auction house for real money. And that can be identically copied and done with crypto at the same time, or so the token economy of the game. That's the potential that I see for gaming. Good example, the driven players to play more, and obviously content creator to partake in that experience. That's my take. Hey Amen. Great, great take. I, I'm loving this space. The entertainment value? Come, come to some roundtable spaces if you guys are feel like you're lacking in that with a couple of these Web3 games out here. Uh, I'm going to throw this one to Shao, and then I saw Tokir. You had your hand up. Uh, Shao, go for it. Yeah, I'm going to actually lean into Grim instead of arguing with him. I think this is one of the coolest parts about like where the future of gaming is, right? Because the reality is, is I have a young son. And what's super cool is when you see the most like playable games among youth, it's usually UGC, right? It's going to be your Roblox, your Minecraft, your Fortnite. Uh, and this is, to me, the wave of the future. So, you know, if it makes sense that if you're going to have gameplay, utilize AI, utilize um ugc and you really build with it because it's not so much of like oh who's playing today right but it's who's playing now as a kid and this onboarding process crypto is going to be the same thing we look at social media it's going to be an accepted term at some point in time so you might as well embrace the wave of what the current meta is and just build that into the infrastructure because it's it's blowing up and so i feel like you know not only is grim correct but like you, you have to see like the tail end of this this is where it's going to capture and grab that next like 13 14 15 year old like, you know, Crypto Leon, who's like, hey, I want to be able to do both. And like, you know, I, I've met everybody in RL, but I want to create more content. UGC is the way. So I, I definitely see it. And it's definitely the, fu the future, especially when you talk about onboarding, you know, kids and teens in this space. Oh, man, Lo love that one. Uh, Tokir, go for it. Hey, man. I, I mean, like, I think like, UG I mean, like UGC is definitely one of the strong or you can say like you know one of the basic requirements of any particular game or a publisher going to market but what i personally want to see is more of like you know the grassroots community development because um, if unless we don't have the grassroots level community developments done in the web3 gaming side or the publisher's side i believe that um it's going to be like, you know, uh, usually what we see, if I articulate it in this way, that we see that a lot of particular projects who are, who are raising these, who are raising like, let's say, a substantial amount of funds would usually prefer to go and do like, you know, hey, I'm doing Ronaldo, LeBron James or any particular like, you know, athlete or a tier one KOL kind of collaboration um, and burn a lot of funds on that way or uh, let's say uh, spending more on like, uh, token side of marketing but let's if if we i think if uh, if we look at like axie infinity one of the biggest success reasons was like you know uh, that eventually at, at one particular point the grassroots community started picking up the game and they somehow obviously saw that uh, irrespective of whether the game was fun or not like they enjoyed the rewards being reaped out of it and so eventually they fall in love with the game now like in the same way, I think um, if uh, that those those grassroots communities can only be developed if uh, one knows their MVCs, which is like the viable communities in the beginning, then uh, designing their particular MVPs in that specific way that um, like, you know, that specific community is loving the game and is fighting more of relativity uh, compared to the Web2 Web games. Um, and at the same time, if um, if we see it in, in, a, in a narrative uh, base distribution. Uh, that's going to. That is the stage when you see UGCs coming in play, and uh, eventually, I think like that's what makes a publisher a publisher, and uh, I think that's what helps also the games and retention, and obviously then the revenue flows in. It's not always the token. It's not only the asset side of things, but you have to take a game to that, or a publisher has to take a product to that level where they eventually end up buying the product. Unfortunately, we see a lot of Web3 developments being done and where people are more focused into generating revenue like from day one while they are doing distribution, right? So it always is a slow and gradual space. So I think they can distribute that burn rates into the grassroots communities rather than going for major uh, KOLs and um, then build their own specific community and have higher retention eventually. 
I, that, I, excellent take. I, I do think that we needed some some of the technicals mixed in with a little bit of the degeneracy that we were having up in this space. Um, it's about that time to throw it over to experts. We've got some questions for you. I'm personally curious about a few things you guys are doing. I want to get to the last hand, and then it's all all lights and shine on experts. Uh, Matthew, go for it. Yeah, so I, I think I echo what Turkey was saying, that we need to build up from the community. But one thing I would say is a lot of people, and maybe this is a conspiracy theory from my side, but the reason a lot of people are saying UTC and it's the future for the kids is the kids don't have games made for them anymore. No one makes games for kids. The, the God of War, the last God of War came out. He's old, he's cranky, and he has a kid. That game's made for me, who played the first God of War. It's not made for a 14-year-old. Like... No one in AAA can afford to market to kids. It's too risky. So this is why they make their own games in Roblox. They make their own games in Minecraft. And they don't go into esports anymore because they go from iPad to PC to play these UGC games where all their friends are. They follow their friends. So we have to be very careful when we're just bolting on UGC and saying it's the future. We have to look at the need that these people who are playing these little games have. And that's basically they don't have any social spaces in games like, they don't have, like, couch co-op anymore. They don't go around and see their mates and play Mario Party so much. Nintendo is literally the only one building for kids. So if we want to embrace the future, you can't really just say, let's stick UGC on it, and the little ones will love it. You really have to sort of push this and make it a grassroots thing. A ex excellent way to end off that conversation. Um, all right, guys, time for experts. I've got some questions for White Glint. First... I, I want to say that the logo looks very cool. I am digging that logo. I'm a sucker for branding out here. But White Glint, Glint why don't you give us a, a quick intro about Xverse? And then, you know, hook me in, and then we've got some questions for you. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we'll skip, like, the whole 10-minute pitch and jump right into it. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, like, uh, you know, we started with the idea um of coming into web3 um because we, we we've had experience in a traditional space like working for other big companies that i won't name which will be our competitors hopefully pretty soon and we were looking at web3 as like a potential market to go into because we saw a lot of areas where we could come in and be like hey there's a good chance that we can take a market share here if we like do two things one make a really good game and make sure it's a game that people want to play and not just focus on the narrative of like, hey, if I come in and spend five minutes in this game, I'm going to earn like five dollars, right? Because that's not that's not sustainable. Um, we've seen multiple um, examples of this not working. So that was really it, right? Simple point. Come in, make a great game and, you know, the product will speak for itself and we'll grow like our users organically. Um, that's basically what we're doing now. Um, as for the product itself, um, Xbox is a first-person shooter. We've actually went through like many different iterations to get to this point. Um, I'll touch on that a bit later if you want me to expand on that. And <clears throat> what we're doing differently or not differently is really just taking what is working in Web 2 and then applying that into Web 3. So that's really like simplicity, what people are already used to in the space, so they can just jump right in and, you know, enjoy what we're building. Um, but yeah, first-person shooter, building on Unreal Engine 5, we've been developing for three years now, and we are finally getting to launch. Like, dude, the past week and a half has been super hectic. I don't really know how I'm here right now, just a lot of caffeine, but yeah, happy to answer any questions. <laughs> I, I hope that's enough detail. I'm, I'm kind of lost now. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. That was perfect. And what, what you're experiencing right now? That's called being down in the trenches with us. Well, welcome to Web3. Like, that's just how it, how it happens over here. Building for three years, very impressive. And for those of you who don't know, between two and five years is what it typically takes to make some of these high-caliber, high-quality games. So I'm, you know, not another check, another check, another checkbox marked. Oh, man, that was a tongue twister, but... Uh, something I want to know about the the unique features. Like, tell tell us about some of the unique features within Xverse that really separates you guys from some of the other games. Absolutely, man. Um, as for gameplay itself, um, 
there's not too much like unique to it besides the way we've um, structured the gameplay when it comes to earning and I'll touch on that a little bit. I would say the main unique feature that we have right now is definitely the way that we look and the way that we feel. Um, I don't really feel like there's too much of that in the market yet, especially being a first person shooter, probably because it's really hard to build too. You don't have any frameworks to rely on when it's first person. Um, now, something different that we're doing and i mentioned this a bit earlier um in the space is like how do we deal with inflation right when it comes to earnings so and we also don't want to be like a pay to win game because you're going to have to keep scaling that over time so how do we solve this um it's one of the main things that we're always thinking about we had a couple of ideas um and the main thing that we kind of landed on was like look we don't need to be paid to win um, we shouldn't be gatekeeping people behind like purchasing a stronger weapon to progress in game because this is not going to be healthy in the long run what we have done is tied earning to the skill of the player that is coming into the game so how do we do this um a very simple example and this is the framework that we're going to be using for all of our game modes that will allow players to earn our tokens is a staking system We'll probably have to change that name in the future for um, no confusion. But basically the idea is before you enter a game mode um, that allows you to earn the Xverse token, you're going to need to stake a certain amount of our Xverse token. And this is going to put you into a queue and a pool with other players who are staking as well. Now at the end of the match, only the top 10% of players are going to earn the, um, the amount uh, from you know the pool of stake tokens and we structured it this way because we feel like it's it's fair right like if you're good enough then you earn a token if you're not then you lose a certain amount of tokens but that's kind of the risk to reward ratio that we're going with um i'd say i would say that's probably the most unique thing that we have going on at experts uh, besides making it look good hey lo love it um I'm, I'm a fan of all things web3 and you really just uh you, you tickled me a little bit uh piqued my interest uh quite some some space there but um something else uh well, what we love in web3 aside from the founders coming down into the trenches with us twitter spaces and saying gm i mean we we love partnerships that's that's a big part of web3 tell tell us about some of your partnerships man who are who are your friends out here <laughs> The entire space, dude. Like, we're open to anyone who wants to come and work with us. So, <laughs> everybody here. Everybody here. Um, our main partners is going to be, you know, some pretty good names. Um, we've worked with them for, throughout the years as well. We've got a couple of things in the pipeline coming up, um, which would be immutable. Um, we're doing something with BSC as well. Uh, we've just launched at CD5. We've all, we're also incubated by them. Um, we're incubated by KuCoin Labs as well. Um, I would say those are a couple of the big names I would mention. Uh, but yeah, super simple, straightforward. Like we want to have partnerships that are actually adding something to our product rather than just being like, hey, we're partnering with this huge thing. But, you know, there's there's no utility for it um, for our, our community and for us. So just keeping it really simple, making sure it relates to the game. I absolutely love that. And I want to tell all, any of you other speakers up here, if you've got any questions uh, for experts, don't hesitate to raise your hand. Um, another one, White, White Glenn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you again. We, we were talking about some UGC earlier in this space. You told us some very exciting things. Um, tell, tell me a little bit more about all the different UGC options in there. One thing I found in the space is that I'm noticing more and more gamers interested in creating. So I'm, I'm very curious on the options you guys have. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Like for UGC side, uh, like I mentioned before, what we're doing, um, the stuff that we're building for UGC is purely cosmetics only. I uh, forgot to mention that earlier too. Like everything we have in x is either going to be something that's going to boost your season pass in game or it's going to be cosmetics um we're not like trying to complicate the entire nfts that happen uh inside experts so ugc creation specifically is going to be for cosmetics and what we're doing here um i'm very careful when i throw around this word like uh we're actually using ai to help us create the skins so text prompts basically you come in um this is going to be on the marketplace again set some timelines here this will take quite a while to develop i'm not going to really say when it's coming out but how this works is that you go into a marketplace you go to the ucc creation uh, content area and you're going to be able to select different parts of our proxies so proxies are those robots that we have running around shooting each other and you'll be able to create you know skins based on those different things you're selecting um, either weapons or different parts on the robots the heads and arms and hands for example now you go in there, um, you're going to select something, um, let's say a weapon, and you're going to put in a text prompt. Um, 
like let's say some fire trails um, on my gun barrel that's an AK-47 and then you're going to get a couple of uh, different examples that you can choose from. Once you choose that, then you pay for it in our token and then you're done. It's minted on chain. You're going to be able to trade that in the marketplace. Um, just trade for it like that. That's the main feature for UGC we've got. Oh, man. Very exciting stuff. I, I personally. It's hard, dude. Like, it's really hard. It's really hard. Like I mentioned before, like, we have that. We have the front end, right? Like, we have the front end of creating that, but like adding um, how much value per different criteria on the weapon and what type of cosmetics are going to be generated. That's a really hard part. So we're kind of stuck there right now. Hey, and anything that you guys have there all sound, all of it sounds very cool to me. Um, something else that I know a lot of the listeners out here are curious about is, as well as anyone who wants to be a part of your community, <clears throat> what are you guys do going to do? post IDO, like after this launch, that's when things usually begin. That, that's not the end of the journey. That's the beginning. What are some of the major milestones or developments that the community, investors, anyone involved in your ecosystem, what can we look forward to post launch? Yeah, man. So we've got a lot of things planned. Um, one of the big things is tying in some partnerships on the esports place. Um, Cause we think that's the main area that's going to really bring some traction um, making sure that we're running tournaments for the communities, making sure we're running actual live LAN tournaments as well is pretty important. We've got a couple of things coming up in the pipeline for that. Um, so that's a major focus for us right now, making sure that we're getting the interest of esports players to come in and start playing our game, taking part in our tournament, and that's how we're going to bring traction for our users. So really pushing that one hard right now. In terms of product, um, we're looking to go live with our beta version a month from now. Um, so hopefully everything lines up and we're going to have that beta coming out there. And that's when we're going to tie together these tournaments. A lot of online tournaments, but um, going to be pushing some really big LAN tournaments pretty soon as well. No oh, man, you just you just keep dropping bomb after bomb on us. Like I, I love what I'm hearing. Um, something else. And look, I, I was looking over things. I see a lot of big names. I see a lot of big partnerships. And you know, I I just want the players to know uh, from you. But it says you're you're launching on Bybit. You've got you're available on Binance Smart Chain, which you know already two big ones. So uh, love that. Um, does, does that have any sort of impact on the ecosystem or player incentives or anything along those lines? You know, we, we like to keep it simple for the gamers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so our token, our main token is going to be on the Binance Smart Chain. Um, and yes, we are launching on Bybit tomorrow. So that's like, that's a huge pressure, man. Um, I I do believe we have everything in place for that already. As for how this is going to relate to the players, one of the main parts is definitely the gas fees, right? If you're coming in and doing all these transactions, um, it shouldn't be too crazy on your wallet, which is one reason why we partner with Immutable as well, to kind of have that work as our core. And then if you want to bring out anything from Xverse onto Binance Smart Chain, you're just going to bridge that across. But as long as you're playing inside Xverse, things are going to be quick and fast and easy and cheap, right? So that's an important part because onboarding these Web2 users um, even if it's like five cents for a transaction, I'm like, dude, why am I paying five cents just to move my skin, uh, you know, from another wallet to another wallet or to another part of my character? It just doesn't make sense. So that, that those are the key things that we were working on, you know, making sure that user onboarding process is super easy. Immutable has a lot of stuff in place to get this even um, smoother. So we're, we're working on some pretty cool things with them. Oh, man, uh, lo love that. And I love how you really make it easy for people to follow along with what you're saying. Um, that, that's something I personally look for in the founders. Um, all right, guys, call to action time. We want to make sure that you guys know everything that you need to know about Xverse. Time, grab your shields, grab your swords, uh, white glit. We, we know you said buy bit, which, wow. And what do we do if we want to play the game? Like, do we hop into your Discord server we got to fuck. Everybody, make sure you're following them on Twitter. And yeah, <laughs> lit. go for it. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Like, uh, the biggest place for all of our announcements going out is going to be Twitter and Discord. Um, we've got a great team of moderators running that. My head of operation does a really great job of keeping everyone up to date. So if you have any questions, you want to find out when we're launching, what time we're listing, when we're having our beta testing, when we're having the next tournament, please just follow our Twitter. Um, 
come into our Discord, just start chatting there. Um, our moderators are like online 24-7, so they'll be able to answer anything at all. So those are going to be the two biggest areas to come in and join 100%. And we'll, we've got you covered. Oh, man, love that. So you heard him, everybody. Join the Discord. Follow on Twitter if you want to make sure to stay up to date. I'm already assuming that the Discord is very pretty looking because of that logo. Like, that, that A, A plus branding over there, Glit. Just wanted to say <laughs> that, but... Thank Man, you. Yeah, I'm, I might Thank need. To, I might need to get the number of your branding. Man, guy. Our, 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 yeah, like our branding head. Uh, <laughs> so our art director has a lot of experience. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to drop any names where he's been working at before, but he's done quite a bit for PlaySense. If you guys are familiar with that company, um, we're taking a lot of things from that experience there and applying it to you know whatever we're doing at X first. Um, our art director, Alex, that's his name. He works really close with our founder, Nikita. He's on that x main account if you got any design questions. Uh, but we're not available to help anybody else for now. <laughs> so please wait about like six months and we'll be able to, you know, talk about something. But definitely not right now. <laughs> uh, you, you heard him, everybody. World-class brander is tied up at the moment, but... Join the Discord and follow him on Twitter, and in six months, it might, it, he'll probably still be locked up, but you know, still. I, I just realized this space is recorded, too, so <laughs> everyone's going to be coming in six months like, hey, man, we need some branding. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you. Well, uh, can't, can't say that won't be me, but that's the beauty of coming up here on the spaces. But all right, everybody, I mean, th this has been awesome. I am personally very curious and interested in experts now. I can't wait to see how things go for them. You get to build, you get to create, you get to play, you get to earn. You get to do so many other things that we don't even have enough time left in this space to say. Buy bit and more tournaments, more experiences for the community. I mean, what what more what more could you want? Um, White Glit, any any closing thoughts for us? Like what what do what's coming next? Other than those two, and yeah, just closing thoughts for us. This has been an awesome space. Definitely, dude. I actually do want to share something, um, and I think this kind of, um, you know, is, is sort of what everyone thinks as well. Like, if we're going to be going and trying to get these Web two players coming into Web three, we need to be doing things on you know a level that is correct and be like focusing on a product that's actually going to bring players and not focusing on trying to like build your pockets up, which everyone else is doing. Like, not going to name any names, but I'm pretty sure you know we see all these projects out there and be like, hey, you know, we've got all this cool stuff, we've got that, and nothing has even been delivered. We're trying to make that change, not over promising and making sure we're over delivering so i think i think we're one to look out for for sure oh man absolutely love that i'm, I'm gonna have to quote the great philosopher white glit someday guys but um yeah awesome space appreciate everybody for coming out and keep an eye open for all things to come from experts. Sounds like they're just getting started. World-class team, and hey, Web3, we love games, and we love everything that comes along with it. So this is one that you want to keep an eye on. Appreciate all of the listeners for coming out, all of the speakers for coming up. These hour-long spaces are one of the best parts of my day. Can't wait till the next one. And yeah, roundtable spaces, guys. These are going to be lit from now on. Everybody. Have an awesome day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you at launch. Bye-bye. Good luck. Thank you.